Continuing this morning and continuing until the fourth Sunday of Advent, both Monsignor Gears and I are going to give a little talk at the beginning of Mass um, every Sunday uh, that will help us have a deeper understanding of the nature of the Eucharist. This is part of our parish efforts to uh, celebrate our Eucharistic revival that is taking place throughout the country. So it's a time for us, just a few minutes before Mass, and I promise you we'll keep our homilies very short. We're going to take 10 minutes of your time here um, uh, to, to meditate and to think about how we celebrate and why we celebrate um, the Eucharist here. In the life of the church, uh, since the early days of the church, we have uh, participated in something that theologians call the sacramental principle. Sacramental theology is a very complicated um, part of our liturgical life, part of our church history. The nature of the liturgy has changed um, somewhat from generation to generation. But the basic form of the liturgy is the same today as it was in the very earliest account of the Mass, which comes from St. Paul, who generally describes the Eucharist, but also a document called the Didache, which dates from about the year 100 or so, that outlines the Mass as we celebrate it here today. The sacramental principle, however, emphasizes the nature of the things that we use to express the divine realities that are part of our lives. We use the things of the earth to express the things of heaven. Water, for example, in baptism expresses the divine election, a child or an adult becoming incorporated into the body of Christ. The vows and promises of marriage spoken by a bride and groom express the reflection of God's love in covenant with his people. The laying on of hands and the anointing with oil marks a man for service in the priesthood. The oral admission of sin and absolution proclaims God's bountiful, bountiful mercy. L laying on of hands and anointing and the prayer of consecration concludes the ritual of baptism when the sacrament of confirmation calls down the Holy Spirit on a candidate. And especially at the very pinnacle of the church's liturgical life, the bread and wine of the Eucharist reveals God's nourishing and protective love for us, the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus given to us for our spiritual nourishment. Jesus says in that very last part of his existence with the apostles, I will be with you until the end of time. And where two or more are gathered there in my name, there I am with them. The things of the earth, elements of common use, are used to describe and to attend to God's divine presence among us. Bread and wine, oil, the spoken word, water. The language of our communion with God is both expressed and brought about by the words, actions, and elements of the Eucharist and of all of the sacraments. The Second Vatican Council calls all the faithful to full, conscious, active participation in the action of the Eucharist. There is no room for passi passive gazing upon what happens here. The Eucharist is not just the action of the priest in the sanctuary of the church. We move together, using our whole bodies to express our union with God speaking and listening, standing, kneeling, sitting, singing, striking our breasts for ourselves in the guilt of sin, signing ourselves with the sign of the cross, singing and responding, raising our voices together, professing, processing forward for the Eucharist. All our senses, all our whole bodies are used in the action of the Eucharist, and we are called to do that with great deliberation and purpose. I laugh about the experience that I had um, in high school when I went to a, a movie with some friends of ours, mine, a whole group of us, and the first person down the aisle was one of my friends who, you know, in the movie theater genuflected and went into the first row uh, that we sat in. You know? So sometimes our gestures at mass are absolutely shallow. So for example, when the priest says, the Lord be with you, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, and we all sign ourselves like that, what is that about? 
What's happening in that gesture? You know, there's a universal prayer that's supposed to go to that that we learned as children that we maybe have forgotten. May the Lord be in my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. Do you do that? Or is it just an empty gesture? When you come into the church and genuflect before you go into the pew, what happens with that? Do you address yourself to the Lord in the tabernacle? What's the purpose of that gesture? Do we bring our minds and our hearts to bear in those gestures of the Mass? The gestures of the Mass, all of them from beginning to end, are intended to bring us to a deeper appreciation of the Lord's Spirit moving among us. We do it together. Bound to the earth, we, his holy people, use these earthly realities to express the invisible reality of God's incarnation, especially in the person of Jesus, but God's love for us and his promise to be with us until the end of time. This is my body. This is my blood, Jesus says as the Eucharist was instituted, given up and poured out for you. The whole action of the Eucharist is a prayer for the whole church, not just the priest, but for all of us. And the gestures and movement of the liturgy brings all of us into praise and worship for God. It's not just a matter of coming in and sitting down and letting the priest go through all of the actions. We do this together. The sign of the cross, the genuflection of reverence and awe, the bowing at the name of Jesus and Mary. How often do we do that? Striking ourselves in sorrow for our sins. Do we, when we do that, is that a gesture that says, this is my sin? Are you conscious of your sin? What happens when you come into church and kneel down for a few minutes? What's going on there? It's a chance for us to prepare ourselves for that moment, to examine our conscience, and to make our intention for the Mass. Do we do that, or do we just kneel down for a few minutes and then sit down? Kneeling in reverence at the mysteries of our faith and receiving the Eucharist that is given to us as a gift and as a divine privilege. Even now, God is making us into a holy people. Even now, we are called to take hold of the celebration of the Mass in all of its detail and all of its parts. And with body and soul, together, each week, week by week, year by year, let us praise and glorify the God who has made us.